friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we are in a completely different location here at the nursery. You can see behind me is our house. So that kind of gives you a little bit of perspective of where we are. The nursery is actually over my left corner. We are in this fantastic open field um, that has lots of walnut trees and oak trees around us. And today we are going to be planting some persimmon fruit trees. Now, you may be thinking, Jenny, what in the world are you planting persimmons for? Or what is a persimmon? Well, I'm so glad you asked. There is a little bit of family history here. So persimmons are little small orangey apricot fruits that ripen in the fall. Remember, we are in North Carolina, a zone 7B. And for us, we have native wild persimmon trees growing all around us. The thing is, though, is that they're not very um, dependable and predictable as far as their fruit set because they require another pollinator, another persimmon pollinator tree, and all sorts of things. So we don't always get a lot of fruit every year. Now, now you're saying, well, what do you use a persimmon for? My family, my mama, when I was growing up, would always and still does make persimmon pudding. Now, persimmon pudding is not like a pudding like what we would think. It is more of a brownie-like dessert. It is full of cinnamon and nutmeg and allspice. And for us, for me as a child growing up, I have brought this now into our family with our kids, and it is very much a fall seasonal dessert. So you know it is fall when you get to have persimmon pudding. And if we have a great crop of it, then we can actually freeze the fruit and then use it later on into the year. So our kids were like, we just don't get a lot of persimmons anymore. So can we go ahead and get some trees? And I was like, yes, that is fantastic. So we went ahead and ordered four different, well, there's, we have four trees total. There's two different varieties. I went ahead and got two of each variety just to make sure in case something happens to one of them. So I ordered them from Stark Brothers Nursery. It's a great online. They really specialize in fruit, nut trees, bushes, those kinds of things. My parents have ordered trees from them for years and years and always had great quality. So for me, that was my natural choice to go and get them. So we have two different kinds of persimmons that we're going to be planting today. Just go ahead and forgive me for the pronunciation. One we're going to call Fuyo and the other one is Ichi. And there's nice long names. But these are Asian persimmons. They are self-pollinating, so they do not require um, the male and female trees to pollinate. So we're gonna get fruit every year. They are seedless, which is nice because our native ones have big fat seeds in them. And so we don't even have to worry about that. They will still be um, ripened, will be in season beginning in September and then go through October. Now the Fuyo is going to be about a 15 to 20 foot tall and wide tree where the Ichi is only going to be 8 to 10 feet wide and tall. So we have a great little height variation and it's just going to be a nice addition to our um, landscape and to our family. It will take about two to three years before we see any kind of fruit set on these trees. So remember, always plan ahead. This is not going to be an instant gratification kind of thing, but I want these trees to be here for us 10, 15 years from now. When my kids are older and grown, I want them to have a great resource, consistent supply of persimmons so that they can carry on this tradition with their family. So what we're going to do is Jerry's got the machine. We're going to go ahead and dig some holes and get these trees planted. Alrighty, so we're going to get these beautiful trees planted. You can see now as far as a mail order fruit tree, this is a really nice size tree. They come in these great pots. These were the easy start pots. So what Jerry's going to do is use the machine to go ahead and dig the hole. Now, obviously the auger on the bobcat is going to make a nice, big, impressive hole, but that's okay because it is really going to loosen up and aerate our wonderful North Carolina red clay soil so that this tree and all the other trees will have lots of room for their roots to grow. So we're going to go ahead and get those holes dug and then we We'll come back and explain how you plant a tree.
right, so we've got all the holes dug. Now, if you do not have a bobcat at your house with a great big auger on it, no worries. You can easily have dug this with a shovel. Again, we just used what we have available to us, and so that's why we used it. So, um, whenever you are digging your hole for whether it's a tree or a shrub, make sure that your hole is twice as wide um, than the container that is going in. We've clearly May met those requirements for this container. So what we're going to do is go ahead and um, get this guy planted. So when you're planting your tree, we want to make sure that, of course, this hole is a little bit too deep. So we're going to bring some dirt back in so that you don't want your tree, especially because we have this red clay here in North Carolina, we don't want your tree, the top of your tree roots to be under below the surface of the ground and bringing soil back on top of it. So that is a good height. Now, as always, we use the Espoma Biotone Fertilizer. This is great for root growth. With trees especially, you need a really good, strong root system. So we're just gonna get our cup Sprinkle it in on the bottom. You just put it on the bottom and then we're going to grab the tree and get it in there. Now, this is the Fuyo, so this is going to be one of the tallest ones. And we're going to bring it out gently and it's okay if you lose some soil. It's all right. It's not a problem. It's got a nice, really strong, these roots are a really kind of a dark, they're not like a white root, so it may be hard to see, but they are in there. They are nice and developed, nice, pretty, healthy. So we're gonna get that in here. And I'm gonna let Jerry help me make sure that we're nice and straight. He gives me the thumbs up. And we're gonna bring back the clay. Now, you're just gonna bring it in here um, and get her planted. Now, again, I know I keep telling y'all this all the time, but the fall is the absolute great, perfect time to be planting these trees because we've got all winter for their roots to grow and be happy. So we're gonna get that, push it down, bring in all this dirt back because you want a really strong root system. I just cannot emphasize this enough, how important a good root system on your trees, especially trees and shrubs can be. So, got it in here. Now, when you're planting a tree, I don't care if it's a little fruit tree or if it's a big, huge monster tree, you want to make sure that you do not bring your native soil all the way up to the trunk and cover your roots because trees can actually smother. So you do not want to smother it, the roots. That's a great way to kill your tree really fast. So make sure that it's in there, that it's nice and firm. Now, it, we are gonna get some rain. We've had some rain. It's nice and damp. The soil's nice and moist. It's supposed to rain some today. So I am not going to water this real heavily right now. If we had no rain in the forecast and this is really dry, then obviously you want to keep this well watered. Um, this winter, I shouldn't have to worry too much about watering it, but even next summer, because it'll still be a relatively new tree, if we get, well, not if, when we get really hot and warm and there's no rain, then I am going to want to come in and make sure these guys get some good water at least once a week. We're going to get all these planted and then we're going to come back and we're going to mulch them really well. Um, Stark Brothers recommends putting a four to six inch layer of mulch around the tree. Again, it's what we always talk about. It insulates the roots, keeps the weeds out, and it helps hold in moisture throughout the year. So, oh, you know what I almost forgot? One of the most important things. I get so excited about talking about the tree. I forgot that we're going to put some land and sea compost around it. So it's another reason not to bring your soil too high up there. So you're just gonna take the land and sea and basically you're going to what we call top dress. 
around the tree. Now, th this is compost. This is not necessarily like a fertilizer. Compost is great. You can use it year round. This is a great way to naturally amend your soil, put great nutrients back in here. Um, you can easily do this twice a year. Spring and fall is kind of a good um, schedule for you to put on here. So we're just going to get this mixed in. So every tree when we plant it's going to get some biotone in the root, in the bottom of the hole, and it's going to get land and sea on the top. Another one done. sweet little persimmon trees are planted they are in they are ready to go and now we just let them go and grow as always thank you so much for gardening with Creekside y'all have a fantastic day we'll see you next time bye friends